Good morning guys. It's Sunday now when I'm recording this, so I decided to take it easy and think of some fresh new ideas. For months now I've been trying to think of a way to implement custom layouts for my window manager project. And last night, out of the blue, I had this idea that I really want to try out today. It's a bit of an unusual idea and I'm not sure if you guys will like it. But anyhow, let me show you what I came up with. So let's say this is your screen and you have a window covering some portion of it. And now you want to snap a window right next to it. Hear me out. What if you could drag your blue window anywhere in this area and it would expand to fill the available space? Wouldn't that just be amazing for people with OCD like me? Right now I have my coffee ready right here and some people ask me, so this is my only coffee for today. So recently I refactored most of the logic in the code to enums with associated values to implement more robust state management. And I'd say this was a really nice W right there. But now for this new feature, I'm adding the position of all windows on the screen to the state so that I can find a rectangle that fills the space under the mouse. One of the most useful tools or patterns for me over the years has been the good old state machine. I mean, it's true that once you give somebody a hammer, everything looks like a nail, but still, a hammer fixes a lot of stuff, man. Oh, and speaking of hitting things, I swear to god, I have this washer and dryer machine at home, and it makes a most obnoxious noise when it's been running for a while. But kick it from the side and it always fixes the problem. Like, how? But okay. After I added this aptly named function get fill space snap area from mouse, the part of the video where things go according to plan is officially over. So let's say you're trying to drop this blue window over here, and let's say the red cross is where your mouse is right now. My naive idea was to simply raycast from the mouse position in all four directions until I hit an edge of the screen or another window. Which can work, but there is this edge case where if you have another window that is technically in the way, but is not directly in line with the mouse, it will kind of get ignored. But I was willing to live with this edge case for now because I had a feeling solving that one is not gonna be the biggest problem of today. And I was right. So I spent some time fiddling with a basic for loop and keeping track of the four points I was trying to raycast, and for the most part it was going swimmingly. I did get an occasional build error, but nothing that could be fixed with a bit of brain overclock in the form of caffeine. However, even though I drank the overclock juice, I was still getting all kinds of weird behavior. So I resorted to the one true way of debugging, print statement baby. Some things just never fail, but this is where I started to remember some of the quirks of Apple's absolutely mad coordinate system for windows and mouse and screens and everything else they have. I really think the people who made this should consider another career. But regardless, I still had some coffee left, so let me just quickly explain the level of madness that's going on here. Hear me out. First, you have the screens, which have a coordinate system that starts at the bottom left and goes up and to the right, which is fine. Then you have the mouse, which I'm going to indicate here, like so. And the mouse also goes from bottom left and to the right, which is also fine. But then you have the windows, and for whatever reason, somebody at Apple decided that the windows are gonna be in a whole different coordinate system that goes from top left and goes to the right and to the bottom. Now, this is only the start of the madness. When you have multiple screens, like so, the screens live in a coordinate system that is relative to the bottom left corner of the main screen, which is fine because the coordinate system goes up and to the right. But then, the coordinate systems of the windows in those screens are actually relative to the top left corner of the main screen, which makes the calculations super confusing for everything. But what's most hilarious is that they did this only for the Y axis. The X axis is super simple, it goes from left to right in all coordinate systems for windows, for screens, for the mouse and everything. But for the Y axis, they had to do something crazy. And my question is, 
why stop there? Like, why didn't you guys make the windows go from right to left and maybe make them, you know, relative to the right edge of the screen while you're there? I wonder <laughs> if this is still on the backlog for Apple to do. Maybe they just ran out of sprints or something, but it clearly is kind of like halfway there. It's either here or it's there. And, you know, this is just the madness that I always forget whenever I work on the window manager. So I'm making this part of the video to sort of immortalize this knowledge and I can come back to it later and explain it to myself. <laughs> All right, back to the coding. I do have a function that converts these coordinate systems, but I still don't understand why such a complicated treatment for an otherwise perfectly simple concept. Anyhow, I settled on converting everything to one of the coordinate systems and redo all my raycasting logic. So let me quickly change the wallpaper to a different color so that the snapping preview is more visible and I can show you what I did. And by the way, if you want to get this wallpaper pack, it's free on my website. And thanks to Squarespace, who are sponsoring this video, I get to work on my window manager, which is also free, rather than spend time centering a div. I mean, it's so easy to make changes on the website, like update my documentation, upload the wallpaper packs, make these download buttons. It's a few clicks, really. For me personally, though, the killer feature is the analytics, which can also work without a cookie, so I don't have to put up an ugly consent screen for my European viewers. But I still get nice insights and data to look at later. Check out the link in the description, guys. If you're looking to showcase your projects online, Squarespace makes it super easy with all the templates and nice designs that you can customize, plus you can save 10% if you use my link. But alright, here's what I got so far. When you hold the Option key and drag one of the windows, they will fill the available space, as planned. But then I discovered this super unusual feature with Mac OS, and that is if you Option click on a window that is not focused, the other windows that were are automatically hidden. And this kind of broke the feature that I was working on. But then I saw that the Mac itself didn't really refresh the wallpaper fully. And this is where I reminded myself that given what I'm working with here, I'm doing pretty okay. Anyhow, I changed Alt for Command and that solved my problem with disappearing windows. And at this point I was getting hungry, so I decided to get home real quick and continue later. Fall is really in full swing now and the colors of the city are much different nowadays. Even in the night, the vibe is completely different from just a few weeks ago. It's somehow chilly but also cozy with all the lights. I really like this time of year. I had some obligations in the city so I stayed until dark, but I was excited to come back and finish the feature. So the last thing I worked on was the edge case with the window that's not directly in line with the mouse position. I mean, it's a nice algorithm question to solve, so I spent a few moments thinking about it. But finally, let me show you what I got. A typical example use case is when you have a window like Xcode that has a minimum size so it's larger than half the screen. And if you want to squeeze in the documentation window side by side, you can do it much more easily now. And if you want to open, let's say, a terminal window below the documentation, it's super easy to snap it right into place. So yeah, that pretty much concludes the coding vlog, guys. Um, I'm going to be testing this a little more, but if you enjoyed the episode, make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.